Welcome everyone to another soldering episode. Sorting other vintage things, I also found this Kuro 2 3D accelerator, which is using a power VR core, uh, one of the very few cards produced about 15 years ago or so, I think 2001 or something. This one I got 10 years ago from eBay for something like 3 euro. And actually right now they are more expensive. I checked yesterday and right now they are more like 30 euro. When they came out in 2001, they were of course over 100 euro or dollar. Reviews sorted it as a quite okay-ish budget-oriented 3D accelerator. The reason I got it 10 years ago is because we once nearly got an Power VR Linux driver reverse engineering contract, but unfortunately, as so often with this project, you talk. We had so many discussions even before Android became public with telephone vendors to do Linux phones and such, and various embedded work, automotive, and, and whatnot. And unfortunately, 90% of this project never came through due to various reasons. The companies backed out or changed focus or cancelled some project and so on. It's a little bit the downside of having your own company or being self employed, dealing with all those big companies who constantly change their mind and cancel projects and so on. Which is also why eventually we also started to do end user products like ExactScan and OCR Kit to have something that we can sell each day to end users and not to have to rely on the big customers to eventually go forward with some project. Anyway, so I got this 10 years ago for the possibility of doing power VR reverse engineering. My thinking was it probably is quite close to all the smartphone silicon, even all the seven or so first generations of iPhones use this Power VR graphics. If there is no open source 3D driver for Power VR until I'm retired, maybe one day I do the reverse engineering for that. So I got this into my hands the other day and I noticed that it has a not populated DVI socket. And I noticed that it has a fully populated um, DVI transmitter. There's this cron uh, what is it? CH7011A-T. And as I find it so much desoldering the ISA board the other day, I thought I want to test desoldering a little bit more. So I got some new desoldering wick as well as some flux, although I think this flux may not be the best, but the Conrad around the corner didn't have something better. And um, right now I don't do this so often, although on the YouTube videos it looks like I do this often. This is actually once in 10 years that I do so much. I'm not sure if I will continue to solder so much. So I just got this instead of waiting for some shipment or something better. So I used this um, this flux and the reason I didn't film this because first of all it may be a little bit boring to you to always watch this uh, sorting steam and I was not sure how it will be going and I did not want it to have so much video material of unsuccessful desoldering. However, it worked much better than with this vacuum pump thing. So I put there this flux and this wick and then uh, use the solar iron like this and it surprisingly worked enormously better. So these are 24 pins and Conrad even had a DVI connector in stock surprisingly. However, only with this uh, four additional or is it uh, how many is it six additional or so uh, analog pins or something. And I did not want it to wait ordering weeks for more matching, certainly more expensive. So I will just cut this off. It's of course nicer to order the matching digital only or so connector and not irritate people that they can plug in some cable or something that may not work for them then. But for this test I'm not sure if the BIOS will support this. Uh, that this digital area is populated does not necessarily mean that the BIOS will actually also do it. Also there is some integrated circuit missing here. Though I guess and hope that is related to something else because the data path goes here through the resistors um, directly to the GPU. I really hope this is for something else, uh, video in or capture or whatever. Anyway, mostly it was a soldering test and this was quite successful. So um, in contrast to my former video, you definitely should apply flux and use the wick much better than your vacuum pump or use even more professional equipment for that. And I will now try to get this DVI connector in there and see if there will be a signal coming out. Let's record.
<clears throat> so the moment of truth, will it still work and will it now do DVI? Okay, I think the display, yeah, the display still gets signal, so VGA, at least I did not destroy VGA. Let's see what happens on the freshly soldered in DVI port. Signal on Disney port. That is of course set. So let's take a look why this may not work. So this is the Crontel chip here. And you see all the data lines go here through the resistors directly to the main GPU. And the DVI pins here are clearly connected, as you can see. And I actually should have checked the data sheet of this Crontel chip before I do the soldering because as it turns out this CH7011 is a TV output device, which is doing this awesome macrovision copy protection crap, and otherwise supports TV output of up to 1K by 768 pixels. When you take a look here on these pins, so here is the zero pin marker, and the DVI pins are here, and when you carefully look here, all these pins are not connected. Hmm. So it turns out there are pretty some standard for this kind of transmitters. And I found here some Crontel 7308. That is a DVI transmitter device. And when you take a look on these pins, they are actually indeed connected. By the way, do they have this? TV, do they have data enabled? So this are TV, TD, TV, TD, TV here. So this are TDC. So here we have data channels. TV, TD, right here. So this is transmitter supply voltage and transmitter ground. And where do we have this data channels? Data channel output that is 22, 21. Here they are here, so this are 22, 21, TV, DD, TV, C2, so 21, 4, 5, 8, 7, 30, 31, here, so they are all here. So, <clears throat> so the lesson learned today, we should check the chip specs before we do some soldering, and Maybe it would work to desolder this. Fortunately, I don't have a schematic for this. And no idea. Actually, I did not really find references to a DVI version of this card, so I wonder if they have ever sold a DVI version. In my whole life, I next to never used TV outs, so it's actually really unfortunate that they decided to ship it here with this TV out stuff. So I think it could actually work to desolder this CH7011 and solder a CH3301. But of course there is no guarantee for this. It could be that there are some other signals not there or not compatible and again not sure if the BIOS has this. I'm also not sure what this is actually here. So what this U9 is for and here are um, crystals and if this is related to the DVI circuit or not. So yeah, actually you can find this Crontel 7301 on eBay for $5 or so shipping from Hong Kong. Um, given the uncertainty if this would work, I'm currently not sure, but I hope you learned something, I certainly have, and if there's enough interest, I may consider desoldering this and soldering the DVI transmitter and see if this would work. Give the video a thumbs up if you learned something, and don't forget to subscribe for all the next tinkering and programming to come.